tonight, God. We're grateful, we're grateful, we're grateful, oh God. Oh, Father God, we don't take for granted, oh God, what you're doing and how you're moving, God. Father God, we don't take for granted that we opened our eyes and put our feet on the floor today, God. But we want to say thank you that we moved in your purpose today, God. Yeah. We want to say thank you that we had a mind, oh God, to come in to the house of the Lord and pray corporately on the behalf of others. We want to say thank you, oh God, that in us you have found, oh God, that very one that will stand in the gap, oh God. And Father God, we don't take it for granted tonight, but we say thank you, God, for the privilege and the honor of prayer. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, God. Glory to your name, oh God. We open our mouths and we give you the glory. We give you the honor and we give you the praise because we know, oh God, that our, our prayers do not fall on deaf ears, but they fall on the ears of the true and living God who has all power. And we say thank you, oh God, that the true and living God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and Jesus moves on our behalf at the behest of us, your people, God. What an honor and a privilege, God. And we thank you tonight, God. Oh, God, we come with our hands lifted up and our mouths filled with praise because we know that you're worthy, God. You're worthy of our adoration. You're worthy of all the praise that is due you, God. And no rock shall cry out in our place, God. But the fruit of our lips shall always give thanks unto your name, oh God. Because we recognize you are worthy and we honor you tonight, God. We honor you because you who are the creator of all things see fit to see about us, God. Yeah, glory. Hallelujah. Nobody like you, God. All powerful and yet so humble and loving and kind and merciful that you would take this time out to hear our prayers. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Hallelujah, Lord. Glory to your name, God. Thank you, God. We bless you, Father. Oh, we're grateful, we're grateful, we're grateful, we're grateful, God. With grateful hearts, we say thank you, God. We say thank you for lifting up the tongue down heads, God. Those families who are in bereavement tonight, God. We say thank you tonight, oh God, that you will give beauty for ashes, oh God. We say thank you tonight, oh God, for what you're doing and how you're moving, oh God, in the lives of your people, God. We don't take for granted this night, oh God. But we've come here tonight to take your yoke upon us, oh God. Because your burden is easy, God. As, as our pastor goes forth and pours out into us tonight, God, we're asking you to replenish him, God. Re strengthen him, God. Re revitalize him, God. Restore him, oh God. We thank you for his labor in the word, God. We thank you, oh God, for a man. Oh God, who will be truthful and honest and tell you he's not perfect, but he's seeking to serve a perfect God. Yeah, yeah. So tonight we're asking blessings upon him and his family in the name of Jesus. Father God, we're asking, oh God, that as the musicians come in, as the psalmists come in, God, yeah. that you would bless them and replenish them, restore them, God. Yeah even bless their families as they make the sacrifice to serve and to honor you, God. Father God, I'm so grateful, grateful, grateful tonight to be in the family, the body of Christ, God. And I say thank you, oh God. I say thank you for unity, oh God. Thank you for harmony, oh God. Thank you for respect, oh God. And Father God, thank you, oh God, that we are pressing Toward the mark of the high cost, which is in Christ Jesus, oh God. Knowing, oh God, that we serve the true and living God, who has all power. And we bless you tonight, God. We lift you up and we glorify you tonight, God. We honor, we pray.
give God praise in here. We have worshiped him in our prayer on tonight. Let's celebrate him for allowing us the access of prayer. Y'all, prayer works, y'all. If prayer still works, can we celebrate him answering prayer? Come on, let's give God praise for answering our prayer on tonight. Most gracious master, we adore you. Uh, we bless you. We lift you up. We magnify you. We thank you that the tomb is still empty and our Lord, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ still reigns. He still rules, he still abides, he still, still stands in the gap even right now for us, Father. And through him we pray to you and you answer our prayer because you don't see us as blemished people. You see us as perfect vessels used by you for ministry. So Christ is risen. And he is risen indeed. We celebrate that on tonight. Come on, let's give God praise. Let's give God praise. Christ is risen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Hallelujah. This is the day the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hello, saints of God. Hello, faith-based people. Hello, family. Hello, friend. Do me a favor. Greet your neighbor on tonight. We've been in prayer. Now let's say hello and fellowship for a minute. Hello on the World Wide Web. How you doing out there? So good to see you back in worship today. Thank you for hanging with us. Listen, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Yes, we celebrate that. Our faith is in that, that he is risen indeed on today. Amen. On amen. This is a type in your I am statement. I'm blessed. I'm glad to be here. What is your I am statement today? And then also, also, also take a moment and boast on the Lord. And I'm challenging everybody here to do the same thing. Let's boast on the Lord. Take a moment, look back at your neighbor in the eye and name one thing that the Lord did for you today. Y'all, he woke me up this morning. Y'all still looking at me. Look at your neighbor and brag on the Lord. He woke me up this morning and he started me on my way. I'm so grateful to God for that. Amen? Amen. Amen. Y'all, let's read scripture. Let's read scripture tonight. Anybody excited about Bible study on tonight? Amen. Looking forward to hearing what the Lord has to say to us on tonight. I got my little pill with me. It's called Grace for Today. It's our devotional book. It's my medicine, y'all. And today's medicine for me and for you is uh, the title is a devotional exercise. A devotional exercise. Book of Romans chapter 12. I'm going to actually begin at verse 9. And uh, hear, hear, hear what the Lord has to say to us on tonight um, through the book of Romans chapter 12, beginning at verse 9. Let love be without hypocrisy. Abhor what is evil. Cling to what is good. Be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love. In honor, giving preference to one another. Not lagging in diligence. Fervent in spirit. Serving the Lord. Here's our focus verse for our devotion. Rejoicing in hope. Patient in tribulation. Continuing steadfastly in prayer. Distributing to the needs of the saints given to hospitality. The exercise of devotion, devotional exercise. Somebody give God praise for his word. Let's say amen on tonight. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, most gracious master, our alpha, our omega, our beginning, our end, the author and the finisher of our faith. Lord God Almighty, we thank you that uh, you, you use us, that we may come to you, God, in prayer. We may come to you for guidance in our prayer, advice in our prayer. Lord, thank you for your spirit that teaches us how to pray. Thank you, God. Lord, we pray that you continue to give us a heart for prayer. And so, Lord, even in this prayer right now, this invocation prayer, where we're asking for your presence in this Bible study tonight, please hear us tonight, God. Come and move in this place. Come have your way in this place. Come, come build up our faith as we talk about faith tonight in this place, God. Someone came in here weakened. And they did not, they, they, they felt like giving up and throwing in the towel. But God, you stopped by here and put your Jehovistic hand on them. Thank you for your touch. 
that you know, your special touch, God, that rejuvenates us and revives us on tonight. Thank you, God. Touch the word of God. Touch the presenter of the word of God. We thank you in advance for what you're going to do in this place. In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah and amen. Come on and give God praise. Please welcome our praise team on tonight. Praise the Lord, everybody. Can we go back a little bit? Come on, put your hands together. Hosanna, blessed be the rock. Blessed be the rock of my salvation. Come on, come on, praise the Lord.
Amen. 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 Good evening. Good evening. Uh, we give God praise tonight um, for the opportunity to stand before you and um, lead us in this walk through um, this idea of the look at faith. Um, Y'all give it up for Elder Tracy Bart, Elder Dr. Tracy Barnett. Um, I'll tell you why. He, he put our outline together tonight, and um, he's, a, he's a brilliant mind. And, and I had to play catch up to try to understand where he was coming from. Man, you are a smart gentleman, and I thank you for putting this together for us tonight. And I just pray I do it justice in presentation. Amen. 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 Listen, I pray you got a handout from outside, out front, a look at faith. Um, take a seat. I'm going to put some announcements before you. Y'all, um, you may hear some dripping behind me. We have a AC leaking on our roof right now. Um, but, but thank God for True Vision's um, name in the community and, and, and favor. Um, the, the AC company, who was scheduled to come already on Thursday, they said, okay, we'll be, we're, we're on our way over. So they, they came over tonight. He's working on it. He found the issue and is fixing it right now. So, amen. amen. Bless God for that. Y'all, we are celebrating 31 years. Amen. Amen. We, we celebrated our founders on last Sunday. And um, 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 we are scheduled to do a fiesta Sunday on this Sunday. We're going to have some special guests in the building. Please dress festive for the occasion. It's our way of connecting to San Antonio and what's going on there. The following Sunday, we're going to do All Tithes Sunday on April 28th. Looking forward to you being part of that, as well as dedicate our building at Lackness. Somebody give God praise for that. Amen. Amen. Um, Veterans Health and Veterans are going to be meeting later this week. Um, our women's ministry at the Lackland campus will be doing a live podcast on Saturday morning at 9.30 a.m., the Trauma Reboot class. Um, the sign-ups are still available. There's still a few, few seats available. Um, there's a, a small cost of $20 just for the material. Uh, but it's a dynamic class. Even if you have not been through trauma or if you're deal still dealing with trauma, I still recommend this class. Uh, those of us that know of people that are around us that deal with trauma, this would be a good opportunity to, just to get some insight into helping them as well. Amen? Um, um, the counterculture class um, is going to be regrouping together. We're doing a little mini course, a four-week course called Prayer Works. Um, I'm going to leave that class beginning... Uh, first Sunday in May during the Sunday school hour. Our TVC Women's Ministry is hosting the annual Spring Hat and Sundress Luncheon on Saturday, May 11, 2024 at 11 o'clock a.m. at the Botanical Gardens. Small cost of $55 um, per um, person, per lady. This will be a great gift um, to someone as well. It'll be a good opportunity for the ladies to get together. So please, please mark your calendars for that. Our TVC High School Scholarships are being accepted now until May 31st. Now until May 31st. Please go to our website to web register for that if you're eligible. As well, we're looking for information from our TVC high school graduates. Um, go to our website uh, on between now and May 12th to register for that. And then lastly, we're looking for volunteers. We're going to have our Praise in the Park on Sunday, June 2nd, 2024, at 9.30 a.m., Comanche Park number two. Um, you'll hear more information about that as that day approaches, but we're looking for volunteers now so we can have some meetings as it relates to that. Amen? Amen, amen. amen. Turn your Bibles to the book of Matthew. Book of Matthew, chapter 17. Hey, you, Pastor. Book of Matthew, chapter 17. Beginning at verse 14. Beginning at verse 14. Let's read scripture together and then we'll dive into this study. And when they had come to the multitude, a man came to him, kneeling down to him and saying, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is, epileptic, he is an epileptic and suffers severely. For he often falls into the fire and often into the water. So I brought him to your disciples, but they could not cure him. Then Jesus answered and said, O faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I bear with you? Bring him here to me. 
And Jesus rebuked the demon and it came out of him. And the child was cured from that very hour. Then the disciples came to the Jesus privately and said, why could we not cast it out? So Jesus said to them, because of your unbelief, for surely I say to you, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible for you. However, this kind does not go out except by prayer and fasting. Amen. Amen. Please take your seats. Heavenly Father, most gracious Master, um, speak to us now from your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Y'all, there are moments that I wish I could sing. Um, because I love music. I'm a fan of gospel music. My mama played in the house all the time. I used to play gospel music often when I was growing up. Mississippi Mass Choir, Georgia Mass Choir. You know the greats. The wine is one of our favorite, one of her favorite, one of her favorite and became my favorite. Um, the late Reverend James Cleveland. He had a song that she used to play called Where Is Your Faith in God? The lyrics went something like this. Say you've been sick, tell me about it. And you think you can, can't get well, where is your faith? That was the question. And then where is your faith in God? He goes on to talk about, say you're in trouble, tell me about it. You're going to court next week. Next verse, you say you're out of work, tell me about it. And all your bills are due. Say you've got a habit, tell me about it think you're hooked and can't get free. Where is your faith? Where is your faith in God? Say you're out of money. Tell me about it. You're down to your last dime. Where is your faith? Where is your faith in God? I wish I could sing sometime. <laughs> Y'all, we are tossed from many angles and, and in many directions, and that's what the song there is kind of show us, all the different variations of trouble we could experience in our life. But listen, I think sometimes it, come, it becomes easy to lose our faith because, being honest, we don't know what faith really is. Our faith really does become our money. It really does become our education. We say it's not, but our actions speak louder than our words. We start relying on our friends and our jobs and our resources. So... So tonight, let's, let's start out by defining faith. Faith is defined as, as, a, as a belief with strong, strong conviction. I'm already in our lesson. That's number one, strong conviction. conviction. Not just conviction, but strong conviction. Of, of a firm belief in something for which there may be no tangible proof. Complete trust. Confidence. Reliance or devotion. Faith, faith is the opposite of doubt. The Bible gives us a short definition of faith in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Now, faith, come on, y'all know it, is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of the Greek word, the Greek word of faith is pistis. Write that down. P-I-S-T-I-S. Write that Greek word down. Pistis. It means to believe to the extent of complete trust and reliance. Complete trust and reliance. To have confidence in, to, to believe in. in, in, in I, I believe in God's word and I believe in his promises no matter what it looks like. Somebody's grandma would say it like this, you can't make me doubt him. I know too much about him. In other words, I know what I know that I know what I know. Can I give you a practical example? Um, this just comes to mind even right now. And it may not be good for you, but it just works for me right now. If I lost my keys tonight, there's no doubt in my mind I will get home. Not because... I got money, I can go get another way. I just trust God enough in even the practical sense yeah, yeah. that I will safely get home. Yeah. Number one, there's enough God-loving people in this room. Somebody. <laughs> I hope I'm right about that. That somebody is willing to get me home. Yeah. Or God may just give me enough strength in my legs right. 
to walk myself home. Or I'll just spend the night here in the church and I'm going to be safe. Whatever, I just trust whatever the circumstance. That God's going to work it out. That's my faith. Amen? Number two, faith is the fuel of our Christian journey. For we walk, we live, we walk, we walk by, or, or excuse me, the, the NIV says we live, we live by faith, not by sight. Faith is what keeps us going when things are difficult. Can anybody attest to that, that there's some difficult moments in life and yet you still have to get up out the bed in the morning? The challenges of life try to convince us to throw in the towel and quit. But listen, even in my boldness as I stand here right now, even as confident as I'm sounding, my faith is in God. Not in me, not in man, not in how, not in my dogma, not in my ideas, not in my theories. It's in God. Ah, faith takes humility because it's as, as, as bold as I'm sounding, as bold as I'm sounding, I I need, I got to be humble, humble as I, as I speak this. Faith takes humility. It takes humility. Look at the verse. Look back at the verse. Look back at the verse. Matthew chapter 17, verse 14. A man came to him kneeling down. Kneeling. An, an humble posture. I don't think that's placed there in, that, in the Bible haphazardly. For us to know that he came kneeling down. The man came to Jesus with hope. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the conviction, we already talked about this, conviction of things not seen. But this is in the practical sense. The father was convinced and convicted that if he got in the presence of the Savior, he humbled himself. He understood the limits of his ability. His good looks could not fix the problem. Help me somebody. His wealth could not fix the problem. His education could not fix the problem. His status could not fix his issue. Number four, faith allows us to bring our impossible situations to God who has the authority to answer our impossibilities. Oh, help me somebody. In Scripture, we read, we, 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 we find a suffering father in an impossible situation who makes his way to Jesus. The first request is simply for mercy. He try, he, he, he's, he's, he's tried to find help in other places and other people, but all he found was disappointment. I wonder if anybody can identify with that. I wonder if anybody been looking in, in, in other places and found the same type of disappointment. I wonder if anybody can identify with this father. Maybe the impossibility you wrestled with was with you, was, was you. Maybe you thought it was impossible for God to rescue you or impossible to save you or, 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 or impossible to change your direction. So you, so you brought your problem to everyone except the one that made you and has the authority to deal with your issue. Pride said you could fix your own situation. Pride kept you running to everyone else for answers. But only God can solve it. Anybody ever came to that reality? That at the end of the day, after you didn't exhausted your list, after you didn't tried all you could try, finally you realized it was the Lord. You should have went there the first time. Could have saved you a lot of tears. Could have saved yourself a lot of heartache, a lot of pain if you had just fell on your knees and went to him in the first place. Am I right about it? Y'all yes, listen, faith, number five, faith. Faith gives access to the power of God. Jesus confronts a world, a faithless and perverse generation. twisted in their thinking and it's pushed against the authority of God. He even rebukes his disciples because of their un 
their unbelief. Perhaps his disciples allowed the generation this, this twisted thinking, this weird uh, world that we were living in, that we we're living in, to influence the way they saw the problem and failed to access the power available to them. You ever operated with less authority than you had? Because you tried to fit in with the crowd. Yeah. Tried to do it like your neighbors do it. Tried to do it like the Joneses. Like you saw it on TV. Oh, the Joneses. I'm sorry, y'all. <laughs> y'all do some things all right. <laughs> Jesus says, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move, and, and nothing will be impossible for you. That's verse 20. It is a striking illustration of the fact that faith for Jesus wasn't a matter of intellectual understanding, but a practical reliance on a living God. Listen, it's, it's important to observe here that it's not the amount of faith which brings the impossible within reach, but the power of God. Let me slow down for somebody. Which is available to even the smallest of faith. Well, the illustration was good, wasn't it? Faith grows as we walk with the Lord. Listen, if, if you have faith as a mustard seed, <laughs> hear what it says now. You will say to this mountain, he gave us the illustration of one of the smallest things he could think of at that moment, to show one of the biggest things in their vicinity. We talked about this before I even came out here. Uh, if you go to the top of Matthew chapter 17, they're having a mountaintop experience. Boy, if you go to the top there, they, it, it's Jesus and a couple of his, 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 his most beloved disciples just having a good old time. You ever been there? You were experiencing a mountaintop experience? But then look at the text. This, what they're going through, is in the valley. You ever been there? You had a mountaintop experience, and then you came on down, and as soon as you hit that valley, it became the longest valley in the history of your life. Anybody ready to write a book and tell all what well, them valleys, boy, they do something to you, huh? But he says, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing will be that he then took an impossible thing that they have in front of them and said, nothing will be impossible to you, for you. However, this kind does not go out except by prayer and fasting. Listen, our, our faith might start small, but it should not stay small. The Bible says in Romans chapter, chapter 10, verse 17, so then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. The more we hear the word of God, the more our faith should grow. Well, there's a reason we should come to Bible study. There's a reason we should be here on Sunday morning. There's a reason we should be here at Sunday school. There's a reason we should be at prayer meeting. There's a reason we should go to VBS. Anytime the doors of the church are open and, the, and we're, we're, we're sharing God's word, maybe you should come to lunch with the Lord. Maybe you shouldn't go to that other restaurant one more time. Maybe you should be right here on Wednesday at 12 o'clock noon getting some more word. Because the more we experience God's word, the more our faith should grow. Am I in here today? In another parable, Jesus uses the mustard seed as an illustration of growth. He says, the kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed, which a man took and sowed in his field, which indeed is the least of all the seeds. But when it is grown, it is greater than the herbs and becomes a tree so that the birds of the air come and nest in its branches. That's Matthew chapter 13, verses 31 and 32. If we are to be kingdom people, our faith ought to grow like the mustard seed. People ought to be able to see our faith like a great tree planted. They ought to be able to see our faith from a great distance, and they should be able to take refuge, comfort, and encouragement in your faith when they have none of their own. Amen. You ought to be a mirror of faith. You ought to be able to show people how to go through. Amen? Y'all, we got some time. Can I, can I press further? You might have to write some stuff. Y'all ready to write? 
Number seven, write this. Faith is a gift. Faith is a gift. The book of Ephesians, chapter 2, verses 8 and 9. This is close. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. Y'all listen. This grace is only available through faith. If, you, if grace is what God gifted into you, then faith is the way that you use it. Listen, uh, um, um, grace is the gift from God. Amen. And through, and you've, you've been saved, and through your faith, that not of yourself, it is a gift of God. Not of works, lest anyone should boast. You didn't do anything to earn it. Amen. God gifted it to you. He gave it to you on his own merit. Number eight, number eight. Write this down. Jesus does not want your faith to fail. Some of us give up so easy. Thank God we have a Jesus, a Savior, that does not want your faith to fail. Luke chapter 22, verse 32. But I've prayed for you that your faith should not fail. And when you have returned to me, strengthen your brethren. Jesus didn't pray that Peter would not fail. He prayed that Peter's faith would not fail. According to Matthew, Jesus foretold all the disciples were going to run away, especially that night, and they did. If you go back to Matthew chapter 26, verse 31, and then over at verse 56, you'll, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. So Jesus exhorted to encourage and to help all of them afterwards. I know we're, we're, we're not talking about this particular scripture tonight, but, but look what it says. Notice that Jesus didn't tell Peter if you turn back, but when you've turned back. Jesus told Peter that he had prayed for him, and then he assured him that his prayer was effectual. And as a result, y'all, Peter would be a humbler and more effective tool in the hands of God. Jesus um, foretold of Peter's failure, his repentance, and even still his youthfulness. This should give everybody in the room hope. If Peter could fall down, if Peter could stumble, if Peter could fail Christ, then the mistakes we make, the stumbles you fall, the stumbles when you fall, this should build up everybody in this room in your faith. Especially those of us who have fallen before. Listen, child of God, understand the power that you contain in your faith. Understand if you allow your faith to be rooted in Christ, it will grow. And there's nothing that's impossible for you. Amen? I'm not sure who this word was for tonight. I'm not sure what you're going through, how tall your hill is that you have to climb, or how long your valley is that you have to go through. But I do know this. We have a Jesus that has prayed for us that we not fail. And if you got a Savior that's praying for you, watching over you, standing in the gap for you, you operate from victory. Am I right about it? So I know there's some victorious people in the room tonight that despite how the world has been treating you, despite how the job is going right now, despite how you didn't get that promotion, despite how you may not even got that house, but the Lord himself wants you to hang in there. I got anybody willing to hang in there tonight? I got anybody willing to hang in there and let your faith grow and take this as just a test, a testing of your faith? You got to keep going. Can't throw in the tower just yet. 
The Lord's got your back, and everything's going to be okay. Listen, uh, uh, I remember when I was in high school, and whenever we had a substitute teacher, we got out of school early. We got out of class early. I didn't expect the teacher to be here in the room with us tonight. <laughs> Threw me off just a little bit. But amen. We're going to still get out early. <laughs> Bless the Lord on my soul. Y'all stand with me. Oh. It's good we can laugh at moments, but reality is Monday comes, huh? Tuesday comes, Wednesday comes. Life still hits. Life still weighs down on us. But it's good every now and then just to revisit your faith. As big and strong as you think you are, I hate to say it this way, that's probably because things are going good. The smile on your face is probably because things are smooth and copacetic right now. But the storm is coming. And sometimes um, I've learned this from being on a, living in a, on a coastal state for a little bit of my upbringing. You prepare for the storm before the storm gets there. You don't wait till the rain is falling. You don't wait till the wind is blowing. You keep some sandbags in the area. Keep some plywood to put over the windows. You, you, you prepare for the storm before the storm gets there. Y'all, the storm is coming. Um, but be not dismayed. For whatever you go through, the Lord himself will see you through but I need someone to make decision tonight because you, you, you can't do it walking on your own power. You, you have to make sure your hand's in the right hand. You have to make sure your hand's in the man who can. Um, Jesus the Christ died on the cross for our sins. His blood covers a multitude of sin. That demonstration of love still stands in the gap for each one of us even right now. I believe, and my faith tells me, he sits on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. And from there, he still stands in the gap for me. He still stands in the gap for me. And one day the trumpet shall sound, the dead in Christ shall rise first, but then those of us that remain should be caught up to meet him in the sky. My heart, my soul longs for that day, looks forward to that day. But we want to study war no more. There'll be no more sickness, no more dying, no more crying, no more heartache, no more pain. It'll be Sunday all day. The Sabbath will have no end. Perfect peace. Perfect joy. I look forward to that day. I, and and, and I, I so look forward to that party. I want y'all at the party with me. I want everybody saved. I want everybody to be in the fold. I want everybody in the pen. I want everybody in the protection of the Lord. So if you're one tonight that you're not, I implore you, I, I beg you, I plead with you that you accept Jesus Christ at his word on tonight. Put your faith in him, trust in him fully in every aspect of your life. No, it won't stop the storm from coming. It won't stop the rain from coming down. It won't stop the wind from blowing. There'll be some days you're still going to cry yourself to sleep at night. But you will be able to handle it so, so much better. Oh, so much better. Maybe there's somebody in the room that you need prayer. You, you need the Lord to take care of some things in your life. Or you want to thank him for taking care of some things in your life. We would love to pray with you. But lastly, ah, every time this church door is open, it's to bless the community. Whether by the preach word or by ministry by serve, serving the community. We would love for you to be part of that team that handles that. When the brothers and sisters of this church work to spread the kingdom of God. Amen? Three decisions, one of them fits you tonight. And I believe that whenever the word of God goes forth, it does not return void. And I believe someone made a decision tonight, a life-changing decision. We're going to solidify that through prayer. We have a prayer that we call the prayer of confession. I, I ask you to join me in praying this prayer, even if you've prayed it before. Say it with your heart as if you've never said it ever before. Mean it. Articulate it to God. 
Amen? Repeat after me. Dear Lord Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner. I ask for your forgiveness. I confess you are Lord, Christ, and Savior. I believe you died for my sins and rose from the dead. I turn from my sins, invite you to take charge of my life. I want to trust and follow you forever. In Jesus' name, I pray. We all pray. Hallelujah. Come on, y'all. Hallelujah. And amen. <laughs> amen. Listen, we want to know about it. You can send us an email at info at truevisionchurch.org. You can give us a phone call and leave a voicemail at, in, oh, excuse me, at 210-590-4460. You can fill out one of those cards in the seat back in front of you. Drop it in the great receptacle with your tithe and your offering on the way out the door. Even tonight, let's pray for our tithe and offering as we prepare to leave this place. Heavenly Father, this we hold in our hands symbolically. We ask you to take it, multiply it, divide it, use it for the work of ministry here at True Vision Church. Oh, but now, God, we hold up both hands. And we ask you to continue to stand in the gap for us. Continue to bless us. Continue to keep us. Keep our faith strong. God, we believe we're doing the right thing, putting our faith in you. You've never disappointed. But now bless us and keep us. Let your face shine upon us and be gracious unto us. Let your countenance fall upon us. And God, give us your peace. In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah and amen. <laughs>